What's up guys? If it ain't hard enough, we don't spill. Welcome to Tea Time where we bring you good energy and good vibes, period. My name is Ifeo Lua Oshike and with me is my co-anchor Ifeo Lua. Oh my! Hello. Drum Hello. rolls for you. Yeah, I like the old yellow and black thing going on, you Thank know. Thank you, black and yellow. Such a black and yellow, black and yellow, black and... Uh-huh, mm -hmm. yeah. You know how it is. And knowing how it, is, how it is, you know how we keep it real on this show. You know, we bring you the oldest gist out of the world of entertainment, you know, stuff you like to listen to. But today we're going to be starting on a political level because, yes, we can't. What, what's a show without talking about the American presidential election, which is still ongoing and has put a lot of people on their toes. I, no. I, 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 I've not been around my dad, but I can imagine him in front of the <laughs> big screen right now, like he's been up all night, you know, just waiting, like what's going on, mm. and talking to himself, you know. So I know how um, this political guys can be about it. I know someone, for example, out here, Mr. Coyote Ladendi, and that man hasn't shut his eyes for a minute, <laughs> and he was in this office again to analyze the whole election, you know. So I know yeah. how it can be, but for us, we'll just tell you on a lighter note, but still keeping it real, Americans um, headed to the polls on election day to determine the balance of power in Washington and state houses around the country, marking the end of a bitter, bruising campaign season that was unpended by the pandemic. The first polls opened at 6 a.m. ET yesterday, and minimal disruptions had been reported as of the early afternoon of yesterday, which more than 100 million Americans voted early, amounting to 72.8% of the total vote cast in 2016. Remember 2016, Hillary and Donald Trump. According to the U.S. Elections Project, well, we all know our guy, Kanye West. Hmm. You know Yeezy now. You know Yeezy has to come with his own style. Who has come out to say that he voted for himself? He posted on Twitter, God is so good. Today I am Hallelujah. voting for the first time in my life for the President of the United States and it's for someone I truly trust, me. His tweet was met with mixed reactions from social media users. But um, what do you think about Kanye's tweet? I mean, first, I look at our presidents. Just look, at, uh, I said our presidents because I almost feel like we don't have a president. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, mm. but look at how a president stepped out and mm. saying, "Yeah, he voted for himself." But I like his self-belief. I like his. I like his self-ginger. You know. I yeah. don't. I find it very disturbing. I find mm. him very disturbing. I mean, after I saw um, Kim, Kar Kim Kardashian's tweets where she encourage everybody to go vote mm. and it, it might seem that it's not political or whatever but the person that she retweeted mm. the organization was um set up by michelle obama who is very democratic mm -hmm. so it kind of shows me that there isn't solidarity in the house yes um, definitely i'm not saying that um, kanye west doesn't has he really doesn't have the influence to disrupt the election i don't mm. think so he's only got since someone got up to one percent of the population's mm -hmm. votes mm -hmm. um sixty thousand on, on for american standards that's like saying like he voted him mm. period in the whole mm -hmm. country so it's not that big of a deal but i still think that he he's 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 not okay i don't think he understands the gravity and the seriousness of elections the and the position and what it means for the people I wish that with the kind of influence that he had and the, his spirituality and all of that, he maybe could have um, gotten closer to finding out who these, who these um, candidates are and really put his support to whoever he thought. If it was Trump, mm -hmm. I preferred if he gave a lot of effort into um, advocating to the black community to go out and vote and vote for somebody who actually can possibly win. Mm -hmm. But that is not Kanye West, and his ego is bigger than every other knowledge and fact. So I'm well, glad. I'm glad that he still believes in himself to an extent. I mean, there's nothing wrong with trying to achieve something. I mean, he, he said it's coming out. He said it's coming back out in 2024. That's okay. If he has another 10 million, how many millions has he spent? 10 million dollars to drop? As he lost, as he bonds, you mean? Like, as he spent, did he really spend it? That's what he spent, he yeah. Wasted, he wasted it, did he? Oh. Yeah, how, how many millions ah. did he waste? Mm. Well, but um, for those who care to know about the um, election, you know, we teach you current affairs on this show as well. So we have over 50, we have 50 states in America and 40 states have declared um, their vote. Um, you need 538 electoral, electoral college votes and um, you need 270 of that as a candidate to actually win. And as at the time which this was filed, Biden had 220. 
20 and um, Trump was 213. So Trump is definitely behind. Oh. And the two candidates are already claiming victory. So, oh. yeah, so, yeah. So um, I'm getting information that it's 238 now. So Biden has um, 238 and um, Trump as 2.13. So, mm. you know, it's a wild, it's a wide margin and um, big shout out to them and they're both claiming victory and Trump for some reason I don't think said, they're both claiming victory because I think that, what's he called? What's his name? Biden still said mm. no president, I don't know if it was yesterday or this morning, I still saw it to me, yeah. he said no president has the right to claim victory, only the voters can claim victory. No, but, but right now, as at the time I was um, filing this, right. um, they're both claiming victory and Trump oh. is saying that he's going to the Supreme Court, we don't know for what reason mm. yet, but um, may the best man win and then we i think we just want the best for i think as, as for anyone else who because personally speaking i always used to cringe every time there is um, elections in america because i just don't think it's my business mm. uh, but on on it, it's it's not a genuine realistic idea mm. because america actually does influence the rest of the world wow. greatly but i always feel this sense of like post-colonization happening because when we have our own thing nobody makes a kind of noise mm -hmm. so but I, i'm not i'm not naive that's i, I think i'm struggling between reality and theory and, and ideology mm -hmm. like my ideology is like why am i even bothered about trump and biden that's their own problem we have our own man they're the leaders of the they, they're probably they one of them will be the leader of they the free are. world and that's, and the reason why i'm even bringing this up is because i know that for a lot of people which is quite a lot mm -hmm. um, for the rest of the world and immigration space. A lot of people don't want Trump to win because of how much he's clamping on um, immigration into yeah. America and yeah. out. So, I mean, I, that's the only reason why. A lot of people why. feel Africa hasn't been favored by Trump's regime. No, he and, hasn't. Yeah. He hasn't. And, um, so a lot of them want Africans, him out. But surprisingly, Islam, surprisingly, a lot, a lot of black people are with him, especially the blacks um, yes. who are against abortion, against the LGBT yes. and the religious ones, you know, they, yep. they call themselves the pro-life as well. Mm -hmm. And because of his gun control and anti-LGBT, so he has a lot of black supporters. He does have a lot uh, of black yeah. supporters. I mean, Candace, Candace Owen is a very popular mm -hmm. face mm -hmm. that gets dragged for him, but she's a huge supporter of the of the Republican um, community. I just think America is too large. Mm -hmm. And anything, it seems like both parties are very major. Like, there is a major force with the Democratic um, Party, and there's also a very major force with the Republican Party. But... I mean, we'll see what we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Like I said earlier, may the best man win. Yeah. All right. So moving on. Yes, this is all about love, you know. But now we're talking about two people going at each other's throats, and then we're talking about people bringing it together. And you know, there's nothing that makes us feel better than love. But you know, as they say, love is sweet too. When money enter, love is sweeter. Fact. And this is fact only because money got the involved for this one. Because this man took his girlfriend on a helicopter ride to propose to her. A Nigerian man has packed reactions on social media. After he proposed to his beautiful lover in a very captivating manner, the excited man took his lover on a helicopter trip in order to propose to her. And fans on social media have expressed their excitement over the romantic proposal. Twitter user G-O-N Unamoko, who shared the video on the page, wrote, there are levels to this whole relationship thing, sweet event. Mm -hmm. And some reactions from social media users are, um, Timi Lenyi Akano wrote, Wala for who no get helicopter. <laughs> Ebiye wrote, Wala for who no get fiance. <laughs> fiance. G Empire wrote, level past level, find what works for you. In other news, I get white shirts. Now the woman and helicopter remain. <laughs> Jan Jan one wrote, Omo, another reason why I must have this money. I can't be doing all this Nollywood knee marriage proposal C levels. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So at the end of the day, there's levels to I wish I there could is. complete it. There's levels to this. You know. You know? There, <laughs> there is. is. There's levels, there's levels but, to these things. Huh. Yeah, but let me bring it back um to this table now. I don't know about you. Yeah, yeah, I know about you. Mm -hmm. I know I, I know you've been proposed to, I know you're in gay girl, but um would you have preferred like a bigger, you know, something uh, more grand and stuff I like mean, that or just quiet? I don't, I see what I like about this is that I still didn't see a crowd. Personally, mm. I never liked the idea of a crowd. Mm -hmm. I think I want the crowd after I've said yes. Like yeah. everybody come and see and we party. Mm -hmm. The reason is because that moment is very, very intense. Away from it being beautiful. You're actually making a decision, and that decision is not just emotions. You mm -hmm. are going to be binding your soul, your life, financially, emotionally, legally to this person. So there's a lot of critical thinking that gets involved in that. Um, and I personally, I'm not speaking for anybody else, I personally am not very willed, um, I'm not willed, I'm not mind willed in a way where 
I don't get pressure from other people. Mm -hmm. So I don't want the excitement of my mother's face and my best friend's face to be my concern when yeah. I'm saying yes. I mm -hmm. want to say yes because there's nobody there. I like can quickly just say, bro, let's stand up. Let's talk about it. I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. But if I f have that feeling when there's a lot of crowds, I don't think I would be able to even do that. And you see a lot of ladies actually saying yes because the, the crowd is even screaming, yeah. say yes, yeah, say, say yes, 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 say yes. yes. And before you know, you just say yes, but yeah. that's not really yeah, what so I you don't, want. I, I don't know. I, except maybe you really, even if you really thought about it, every day is a new day. Just yeah. give, give it to me privately and all that. So I, I personally like this because it's still pretty intimate mm -hmm. it's very beautiful it's still really simple and really i mean they, okay i don't know i don't want to sound arrogant to what it about, but to get a helicopter ride is not that expensive yeah, um especially yeah. especially because he doesn't own the helicopter you don't that's know. why well I mean, <laughs> it looks it looks rented i don't know um but if he owns it then i can say it's on another type of level but mm. renting a helicopter is not that big of a deal but it's still really thoughtful and really beautiful and very serene and i, I mean this reminded me of ludicrous the last mm -hmm. time we talked about a uh, a helicopter ride that was get that was viral was Ludacris's um, 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 proposal, right. and I remember that being a big deal because she was an African. She I don't remember where she was from now, but she's like mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the African okay. soil. I remember so, that story. Yeah, so I mean something like that. So it's really beautiful and really thought after. Mm -hmm. I like any proposal that really caters to the woman, mm. and it shows on the person's face. I think so. If this is what she's wanted, and he did that, and he listened to all the details, and he tailored it, and he gave her that, then I'm happy. My proposal was not in a, in a, in a helicopter, but it was everything that I wanted. So I'm All okay right. with that. Mm. All right, so for me, I like a proposal, or I would like to propose in a situation where, uh, or in an environment where the moment speaks for itself and I probably wouldn't even have to say a word. You know, when you just have that moment where you mm. know there's a connection, there's, so like even there's, in a, bed, there's a chemistry. Yeah, even randomly. in bed, it could mm. just be after some very good time, you know, and then I just roll over and I just slip it on your finger. You just wake up and I you just it. see it. And then you just, is it that you put it back on the bed stand or you just um, leave it there and be like, oh, whoa, how did it get there? You get, so let's have a conversation about it then before anyone else knows. Mm. You know, I, I don't know, there was a viral video sometime, I think like two months ago, a month ago, where um, a guy was rolling in the mud because the girl, <laughs> you, did you see that? No. Oh yeah? The guy was rolling in the mud, he was wearing a white um, native and the girl said no, he did it in a very public place and all mm. that. Then I saw the one of the NYS, um, the youth yeah. couples as well, yeah. who, who, who acted like it was going to die. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I've seen all of those, but I think that's too much drama because that's putting too much pressure on the woman, especially mm. when you haven't had that conversation and she doesn't know what's coming. So I think even before I proposed my girl, it would be a surprise at the end of the day, but she would know that, yes, I'm up to something. Just uh, get ready. I mean, if you're, if, you're, if you're watching, I think, yeah, I like, I like, I like. Before you start jumping onto this time, of Virgo, you mm. need to understand the girl that you're with. There's a lot of girls that will change it for you. Yeah. If you go and ask her by herself, there's no cameraman, you have not told her to get yes, glammed so up, well, to true, wear her wig. True. There's a lot of girls like that. I'm definitely not one of those people, but there's a lot of girls like that. And there's, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong. It's just like different strokes for different folks. folks so yeah. don't go and, if you know that you're the kind of man that doesn't like that type of stuff, then maybe you're with somebody who's very has very different values and you need to talk about that. Yeah. But if you know that you like this woman with everything that she comes with and the girl says, I want paparazzi, I want to see her on Instagram. That's why, <laughs> that's why I'll first do it privately. Even if I'm with that type um, of girl, yeah, I'll first do it privately. Then I'll now say, okay, so this one now will act it. We'll call, <laughs> we'll call the Spondeliot and um, people that put their hands behind there to come and teach us how to act the role, you know, <laughs> just, just to make it work. <laughs> but um, that's how it is. Um, update, update, update all the way. So um, on the next story, we told you about the backlash on mm. Rama Sadao yesterday. We showed off some back and got some backlash. Um, Sadao has deleted the controversial photo where she was wearing a backless gown. Mm. And um, she, has, uh, she breaks down and she begs the Muslim community for forgiveness. This is coming after she was attacked by a number of Twitter users from northern Nigeria over the post. Recall that the actress shared the photos of herself rocking the champagne gold gown which showcased her back and her curves on a social media page. In 2016, Rama was expelled from the Hausa film industry, Carnywood, mm -hmm. by the Motion Pictures Practitioners Association of Nigeria for featuring in a romantic musical video by Just Bond musician, Classic. Hmm. So, I don't know. <laughs> this is, it keeps getting deeper because I think this religion is really taking a toll on, um, 
on creatives, especially mm. from the north. Because it makes more sense why they're not mainstream. Why there's not a lot of Muslims do you understand? in a lot in, of mainstream mm -hmm. media because they are not mainstream at all. Do you get it? Yeah. And um, they see a lot of things as um, being a taboo, but sometimes you need to think about the business. What's selling right now? Uh, are you? Uh, well, that's 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 the way I see it. I um, well, I can't speak for them. It's a very sensitive topic to speak it on. Is. It is their um, values and um, principles, so I respect that. But I think that they should. Um, slow down a little bit because i think they're putting a lot of pressure mm. on a lot of these creatives and they're not like you said they're not making them go as far or achieve their full potential if yeah. you ask me okay um i've been trying when, <laughs> when i saw the topic i was very worried as to how to address it yes so how to address it because i don't want to come across as offensive to anyone mm -hmm. um watching her tweets unfold I think where she really started to feel bad mm. was because there was now an argument in the comment sections between both religions. Mm. So I would, I did, which I didn't, but if I wanted to interact with them, I'll have done the same thing to that. This person that's saying, um, Allah doesn't like it or whatever. I want to tell the person, like, calm down now because from my side of view, we have more liberality yeah, in true. Christianity. So there's not becoming that type of um, beef in her comment section. And they're obviously, you know how the Twitter streets and there's a lot of people that don't have manners. And they started to become an attack on Islam, mm. which I still honestly understand. But it doesn't mean that that's what she wanted. Even if she, even if she saw nothing wrong with that um, picture, and she got a backlash here and there, and there was a difference in moral standards, the fact that that picture had now stirred up a conversation that gives rights to people to insult her religion, which is what I'm getting from her, yeah. then she said it's not worth it, a back or no back, whether or not I think it's, it's, it was morally right or whatever. So I get where she's coming from and why she took that down. However, for me, if you're Lua, Everything that I, that I don't like about religion is what is manif manifesting here. I saw a, a picture of a lady, a beautiful lady, with a backless dress. She looked happy. She looked gorgeous. And she posted it. Mm -hmm. And then she takes it down, apologizes a few times, talks about how she didn't mean it. And then now she's covered head to toe, very, deep, very <sighs> like down, sitting in front of a camera. I don't know anything else that's not oppression, if that's not, if that's, if that's not. Look, it's sober if, and unhappy. And, and like really remorse and all of that. You see, the idea that you have to die to self is something that doesn't sit well with me. Sure. It just doesn't. Mm. Die to self, like the things that make me happy, that are not even harmless. Because a religion has said, to me, oh, it doesn't just sit right. The, the fact that I cannot I totally live with my life one. without just by the things that make me me. It's a dress and a back. Like, we're not even talking about nudity here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I mentioned this yesterday that this conversation is not for people like us. Because we are not in the north we don't live in the north we don't have the same northern um what's it called values yeah, not and religious we're not islam well. so mm. i mean like i'm um, islamic rather we're not muslims mm. so i think that makes this conversation very different and i don't think i'll be able to do justice to it in giving a unbiased opinion True. because i don't value the same things that True. they value True. but it's clear that she values it i mean for her to go and sit there and be so sad and so like down and hurt and all that and that's how our religion has is wired and all that. I mean, to each person, it's, it's on. his own. To each its own. I totally agree with you, considering the fact that um, we're not Islam, like you said, or we're not Muslim. Yeah. We probably won't be able to analyze this properly. But um, for anyone watching out there, you know, if there's a way we can make people still express themselves while keeping their religion, I just hope there's a way or there's a time when we'll get to that part of this world or mm. that time in this world where religion will not hold you back from being yourself yeah. or dying to Self. Tea time continues right after this break. Stay with us.